pressure relief valve that keeps it from overpressurizing. I feel like I'm heading into space. Ah, you can't really do the blast thing with this. What if you have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Okay, I'm stuck here. Hey everyone, we're here at the Brooklyn Navy Yard at Final Frontier Design. It's one of the only places in the US where you can actually try on a real life spacesuit. We're gonna check it out. Let's go. Hey, welcome, come on in. The spacesuits are relatively rare things. NASA, or their extravehicular activity suits, have a total of 13. And the, that 13 have existed since 1976. That's one small step for man. Actually, NASA seems in 2019 much more focused on going to the moon. We are going back to the moon. Long term, what will make human space travel more feasible and open to more people is an economic reason. You need a suit that can fit different people quickly and easily. You need a suit that's lightweight and inexpensive and easy to operate. There's essentially two kinds of spacesuits. The one inside a vehicle, NASA paid maybe $200,000 or $250,000 per suit. But the one where you leave the vehicle is much more complex, something like $15 million a suit. If you have $300,000, you can go up on a rocket, but if you only have a couple hundred dollars, you can come in and like touch real spacesuit hardware. And that's kind of the whole idea here is that we're trying to engage people in the exciting future of commercial space. Oh, that is so cool. The suit you'll try on today is an IVA suit, so that means intravehicular activity. It's one made for launch and re-entry that stays inside a vehicle and plugs into the vehicle. Something like 750 parts in that suit, not just fabric, but some hard elements as well. So we'll have you change out of your civilian garments here. You'll leave your underwear on, but you will put these, uh, this long underwear on. And I know you have some special space socks, so you can leave those on. Excellent. This is something I've wanted to do since I was a little boy. And I'm kind of freaking out right now because uh, this is probably the closest I'll ever be to going in space. We have about seven cubic feet per minute of air going into the suit. So okay. I need yeah, to keep just breathing. Just keep breathing. Uh, and what that's going to be is you're going to kind of duck down and pull the helmet ring under your head and kind of push your head backwards. What would happen if I didn't like breathe normally or like hold my breath? Like if you held your breath and the pressure changed a lot, you could get lung barrow trauma where like parts of your lung burst. It's tough for me to move around, but it takes simple little steps. Can you do push-ups? Yeah, do that? I can do a push-up. I can't touch my toes, but I can do a push-up. Okay. I think. I'm okay, just about so to embarrass myself on television. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you later. <laughs> okay, I'm stuck here. Okay, we'll bring you back Thanks up. Thanks so much. <laughs> I feel a lot of the moisture in my fingers. Uh-huh. What do you have to do? What do you have to do if you need to scratch your face? If you have a ditch. Ah, so you can see on there, there is some Velcro. Yeah, that's pretty good. Then uh, what if you have to go to the bathroom? So in this suit, we don't, we, you, you should not go to the bathroom <laughs> in this suit because you're just not configured for it. Got the, it. The way that astronauts deal with that is they wear diapers. One small step for man and one giant step for a localish. Yeah, you're walking. You got it figured out. This is definitely one of the coolest experiences I've ever had, but there is nowhere else you can do this, correct? This is the... Moscow. 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 So here in Brooklyn, New York, and in Moscow are the two places you can try on a spacesuit, and it is an incredible experience for anyone who loves space, travel, or just trying something that only a few people have actually tried. You can point to five or six decades of unintended and incredible technology advancements that have come from space travel, from solar panels to integrated circuits and software. Things come out of space travel that have direct benefit to humanity that is undreamed of. The human race isn't going to stop going to space. If I was to imagine our trajectory of space travel, it's only going to grow. It's inevitable that we will leave our planet. We already have.